Okay. Now the next question is, how do we build the posterior function? Let's go back to the simplest case, which is the counting experiment. So I, I like to start with simple things myself because all the fancy stuff are usually just more fancy way to do the same thing, conceptually. So in counting experiments, uh, the, the probability density function of observing some data given mean of theta is equal to the Poisson distribution. Which means that in this case, we can write down the, the posterior function analytically in a very straightforward way. And then we just analyze the function. So one example is quote unquote uh, uncertainty uh, with x equal to 40. So for the sake of this uh, exercise, let's define the quote unquote uncertainty to be the most likely region of theta that encloses 68.27% of the area of the curve. So if the curve is uh, Gaussian, then this, this range will be one sigma range. That's where this number comes from. So under this definition, uh, we can first write down the analytical form of this, uh, of this posterior density function. And we do some math and we conclude that this range is 33, uh, well, 34 to 46.7. Okay, and then now let's do a small exercise. So under this prescription, uh, what is the quote called uncertainty if we don't observe anything? And please press yes if you get it. At least you know how to how to do it, and no if you're not sure. more for more people to answer before we move to the next one. Okay, I see it's, it's kind of split between yes and no. Okay, so let, let's move on. So uh, the way to do it is we take the prescription literally. So the posterior function given that x equals zero can be written as this. This is just uh, the base zero. And we can plug it in and ignore this term, and it's proportional to this. Give it the, if we set the prior to be one. You can also set it to different things, you'll get different answer. And let's plug in x equals zero, it's just b to the net minus c. So this is how the posterior look like for flat tire. And this is how it look like uh, on the curve. And the prescription says that we want the area that's most likely area that includes 68.27%, uh, which is this, this thing. And we have solved it. And the answer, I think it's 1.12 or something. So under this prescription, we can set the uncertainty 
um, zero counts of data to be zero to one point one two or so. Okay, so let's move on to the more uh, complicated case. So what we can do if the likelihood on one point takes weeks or even months to calculate on a computing cluster, it can happen. For example, uh, if you want to run hydro and drift state, then you will run like 10,000 events at least or even more. And this takes a lot of time. And then you analyze those data. And then in the end, for all those, you get one point on the likelihood function. So there are some applications that things are very computationally intensive. And in this case, the MCMC will not work well. So if you remember, uh, MCMC works by walking through the first case. And for each step, we need one evaluation of the likelihood. And and so if things take a month and you want 10,000 samples uh, and you start now, then maybe by the time you retire, you can, so you can get something. So it's definitely not feasible to do. So what is done here in the statistical analysis in JetGate is that uh, we pick nicely spaced points uh, in the first place, which we call the design points. We evaluate the likelihood on those and we interpret. So if the points are picked well, and for example, if you have five enough points, then an interpolated function should approach the likelihood or the posterior function that we're trying to study. And you can do this in many ways. You can do a grid, uh, or for example, uh, you can get a box of small metal balls, put some charge on it, put it in, uh, in an empty box, and they will repel each other. And once they settle, you use those points, the design points, for example, and so on and so forth. And there's an algorithm called the, the Latin hypercube algorithm, uh, which is also used yesterday. It's basically just a, a more fancy algorithm that does this sampling better than there are other, a lot of other algorithms. And I will not go into how this works here. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you're welcome to look further into it, to it. So now, how should we interpret it? The easiest case is we can interpret it with a straight line or we can use a spline. And this works more or less fine or one dimensional uh, things. So if you have just have one parameter, then you can do this. And the drawback for this is that the generalization to more dimensions is highly non straightforward. So especially if your points are not on the grid. And if you look close enough, it's also not that ideal because if you just connect things with a straight line, there will be kinks. This may or may not cause a problem uh, in the analysis afterwards. Another option is to fit a function. So if you have a very well modified native functional form, and then you can fit uh, this function. Uh, you can evaluate a few likelihoods, determine the parameters on the this function, and use this function as your likelihood. And this, is, this was actually done in the Higgs example that I showed before. So in that case, we were able to track down a, a good function to use and use that. However, generally, uh, uh, we will not have a, a good function to use. And therefore, if you pursue with, with this option, the choice of function is just very, very, very important. And it's very easy to lead to biases with this it's not chosen right. One can also think about something like closest neighbor average. So for each point, uh, you look close by uh, where the, the close design points, 
and use the distance to those plus the inverse distance or you know, things like that to weight and average things. The advantage here is that it's easily generalized to higher dimensions. It doesn't matter what the dimension is. However, it's um, uh, it has to be handled with care uh, because if you are not choosing this weighting carefully, then it will smooth the likely function. And it might not be ideal for the question that we're trying to solve. Uh, which brings us to the next level of quantification, which is the Gaussian process emulator, which was also talked about in the previous few days. So this basically interprets points without needing to assume a global function of form. And this can also easily be adapted to higher dimensions. And another uh, good thing about this is that it also gives interpolation. So if you say that as they can predict, uh, interpolate what the value for six here, uh, theta equals six, six here, it gives you the, the y value, but also a range that the uncertainty about the things based on this. And that can be useful uh, down the road to, to make things more robust. Okay, so let's have a small recap of building the likelihoods. And there are many, many ways we can build a function. And if we are extremely lucky, which almost never happens in real life, uh, we have can have analytical functions for the likelihood or the posterior. And when it becomes more complicated, uh, some approximations have to be made. And for example, in the case of computing intensive calculations, we can pick points and interpolate. And the uh, Gaussian process emulator is one of the good ways to do it, uh, which is uh, why we use it in the statistical analysis in this case. Okay, let's pause a little bit and see if we have any questions. So Yi, one uh, question that came in during your Poisson example is that mm -hmm. it looks like you're assuming a uniform prior in that example? Yes, in that example, yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, I don't see any other questions, so let's move on for now.